One of the major challenges of parenting is dealing with difficult or deviant behavior. And joining me in studio, I have parenting skills coach, Angela Hatchison. Welcome. Thank you. Antonio. And I mean, you know, deviant behavior starts with little things like your kid not wanting to put on their shoes. How do you manage such behavior? It's a good question. I think I'll start with saying uh, deviant behavior is an interesting word. And deviance comes, the thought of deviance comes from expectations. So sometimes we have expectations beyond what a child can do and when they don't perform accordingly we get irritated. Um, we tend to label a lot of behavior as well so the first way of dealing with that is to take a step back and to start understanding where the child is coming from first. So often the child won't put their shoes on in the morning when they're little because going to school is a big task for them at that point in time, it's something new um, and the, the fallout is not putting your shoes on. So if a parent understands that and also and learns how to empathize with the child, um, firstly, and then setting the boundaries, you can't then let the child get away with not going to school and not putting on shoes. But the very first step of empathy, of going, I know where you're at, I understand where you're at, takes away a large part of the problem um, of going, this child is just not doing what I want them to do and I will force it upon them. So and I mean, yeah, if the child gets to a stage where they're throwing tantrums, I mean, yes. when should you start worrying about that type of behavior? Tan tantrums are also an interesting one because inevitably children will throw tantrums in their own home space. So I had a client actually recently who made that shift away from going, my child's not doing this to irritate me or to annoy me or to drive me insane, that I am this child's safe space. I am the place where if the child is feeling a little uncomfortable, they fall apart here at home. Um, small children are getting used to going out into the world. They're used to fitting in with the rules of society. When they come home, they kind of go, bah, you know, and they kind of let it all out. Um, and if we allow them to, be, to do that to some degree, uh, it helps them kind of pull it together when they're out in the real world. I think your bigger trouble is when tantrums are happening away from home and they're behaving perfectly at home. You know. But I mean, where do you draw the line? Because it's all good and well to sympathize and to try to get your child through it. But if your child's constantly doing it, constantly saying, I will not eat my veggies, I will not wear my shoes, I will not do this. I mean, where do you draw the line? So, so lines are an interesting thing because every, every person has a place where boundaries lie. Um, I can't tell anybody where that boundary is. You know, For some people, seven o'clock bedtime is the boundary or eating your, be your beans is the boundary. Some people, it doesn't really matter. So that part is up to the individual. But the first, the starting point is to say, why are we here? Where are we at? And how can I build relationship with this child and understand this child so that I can then encourage cooperation? And um, there's a wonderful tool to use, actually, that is called ECA, very formally, which is a, a language tool that is providing empathy first, but then setting the boundary so that you're not you're not just diving into, you will do as I tell you because so I no say so. So no screaming and yelling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in an ideal world. Huh? <laughs> I, I have three of my own. I know what it's like to be a parent. There's a lot of screaming and yelling. But yes, one wants to step away from that. One wants to go, how do I gain cooperation without getting to that point where I'm just do as I say because I said so. Um, and rather going, what is going on in this dynamic? You know, and how can we shift it without... A lot of the time, children are not heard or understood. A lot of the time, parents uh, don't realize that children have a different emotional thing going on inside them. And we constantly dis take away their empathy. We'll say, oh, don't worry about that. Don't be angry. You know, never mind. Don't be disappointed. You'll get into the next team. We're constantly saying, whatever you're feeling, you're wrong. That's basically what we're saying. Instead of saying, I understand that is where you're at. You also have to put on your shoes, <laughs> you know, but that balance needs to come into play. So empathy first and then your boundary, you know, whatever that boundary might be. And sometimes parents do need to take a step back and say, where, how am, why am I responding to this in the way that I am? And a lot of parents don't look at their own emotional state at that point in time.